I'm incredibly convinced the Framework 16 will be a huge hit for so many reasons. If you're not familiar with the company, they're working on the right to repair for laptops as well as making them quite customizable. The 16 inch model launching later this year furthers that with two more ports, an expansion bay, and a configurable keyboard deck. Two months ago, Framework announced some very cool upgrades to their introductory 13 inch model and also announced a new 16 inch model. While the live show was a bit of a fiasco, the addition of a Ryzen processor and the new modularity of the 16 inch Big Brother really caught my eye. It's taken me some time to make this video because I wanted to think about some of the ramifications of what Framework is doing with the new 16 inch model. And also I wanted to reflect on what they might be able to accomplish with this specific design. In the past couple of months, I've come to the realization that the potential here is really only limited by the imagination. And that's why it's so damn cool. The company has an open source framework for their designs and modularity. Apologies for the pun. <laughs> What'll really make the 16 inch laptop such a game changer is the fact that almost everything can be customized to the user's desire. It's really set apart from the 13 inch by the expansion bay and customizable keyboard deck. The ingenuity here, in my opinion, is the combination of these two features along with the ports. Let's just paint a scenario here. I'm going on a vacation and I wanna do some music production. I'm not going to be working at all, so I set my framework 16 on the table and I swap out the expansion port GPU for a Scarlett 2i2 framework audio interface. I swap the keyboard out to a specific Ableton command keyboard, like a mini version of the push controller they make. That takes up half the deck. The other half, I install a Roly Lumi attachment for a MIDI keyboard. For the ports, I put a HDMI to plug into a TV, some USB-C ports, a micro SD for loading up FLAC samples, or maybe an FM tuner uh, for samples, and two 3.5 millimeter jacks for multiple headphones. For this setup, I actually don't wanna use my trackpad, so I completely omit it because I always use a mouse with Ableton, and I replace it with another small screen as a reference monitor, and one of the framework LED panels they previewed for audio metering. And then I swap the speakers uh, for Dolby upgraded speakers. I also put in a lower resolution 1080p screen for better battery life on the go. Now do you see the potential power of the customization here? The opportunities are endless. Now imagine I do need to go on a work trip and I'm going to be doing some video editing. I can pop in a large second screen above, a low keyboard deck similar to the Asus ZenBook Duo screen pad, a laptop I previously reviewed. Pop in the GPU module to accelerate the performance in my favorite NLE, currently Premiere, but likely DaVinci Resolve soon. And then instead of a normal keyboard, I install a specific Resolve keyboard made by Blackmagic, and to the right of it, I install another Blackmagic dial uh, for color grading when I'm done editing a video. Uh, I emit the trackpad again and use my mouse for this. Potentially, I also install a Pantone calibrated screen that's 4K, so I can get a full resolution preview, and the screen below uh, will be my bin folder. Of course, this will all be semi AIB dependent on who joins. Currently, Cooler Master has uh, made some announcements, but the addition of other AIBs will be huge and I believe will directly correlate to the Framework 16 success. In regards to the GPU expansion bay, I think the really cool thing here will be in the development of power efficiency. As we know, TSMC's three nanometer node is on track for late 2024, early 2025 for launch. So for example, maybe a base 4050 Ti today could have the same power envelope as a 5070 in a few years. This could mean that the expansion GPU bay could house a much stronger GPU in the future, 
within the same physical profile of cooling. My one gripe currently is that when they launch a, I imagine the beefier graphics card upgrades, they'll be hefty in size and then limits portability as it extends the footprint of the laptop as I've seen in my Legion 5 Pro and how it fits in like one out of the five backpacks that I have. It'll also be cool to see what framework brings to the market for uh, eGPU, something they slightly teased. One thing I think we have to remember is that this product is very far removed from the mainstream consumer. Uh, hypothetically, think about people in your family. How many of them would be excited over this product? For me, that's none. Remember, you and I are a very niche subset just by the simple fact that you are watching this video. First, you have to be someone that uses a laptop. Then you have to be not an Apple user. That's 15% of the market wiped right there. Then you have to also understand enough about computer components to know what to upgrade. While I'm someone that loves building PCs, hell, I even built uh, one into the desk right here. Um, side note, stay tuned for that video. While I know there will be a framework refurbished market, perhaps it would be wise for framework to create an upgrade path slash program where every two or three years you can send in your unit and they'll just upgrade it for you. Some people are intimidated of doing it themselves or just don't know enough about the components, but they do want to keep things fresh. While YouTuber Lewis Rossman has diligently pointed out in a video, he did that framework acknowledges some, some problems they've had, but doesn't do much about it. This is certainly better than Apple who mostly gaslights customers on faults and just doesn't admit to them. Hopefully Framework adjusts this a bit as they're a newer company. So we'll see. Back in the year 2000, the Compact Presario 1700T was my first personal laptop. So it holds a very special place in my heart. While the modularity was something unique at the time, it wasn't totally unprecedented. When the laptop format was a newer niche device, we saw all forms of configurations and various internal layouts too. What made the 1700 unique was that you could swap the floppy drive for a disk drive. While it did require a reboot, something that took minutes back in the day with hard drives and slow processors, it gave you the option of customization. You could even replace the drive with an additional battery should you need it on the go. It's really reminiscent of what framework is trying to do, but the framework is so much cooler. I also think that framework is onto something here for the long-term play. If we look at a quick long-term ownership price analysis, let's say you buy an $1,800 laptop today, and then within three years, it's starting to show its age and you need a replacement, or you're the type of person that just likes to upgrade often, at the time of selling, you probably won't get more than $500, either because of the age of the laptop or because there's some slight damage or wear to the laptop. In the framework world, you can simply upgrade your main board for between $450 and $700, depending on the spec, and then sell your old one for $250, $300, as I've researched, or just reuse it in another build. Uh, all the while, you're getting upgrades to PCIe and DDR RAM, as those come along since framework motherboards are all integrated. Where Framework's really addressing an issue here is that the electronics market has certainly shifted to slimmer, lighter, and much harder to repair devices by the likes of Sony, Apple, Samsung, LG. Consumer e-waste is rapidly becoming one of the biggest ecological disasters we'll see. Only about 17.4% of electronic waste will be recorded as being properly collected treated and recycled, a pretty low number. Anyway, I guess the bottom line of this video is that it's been very long since I've been this excited about the future of a company. While having someone like Linus Sebastian back the company is excellent and I give him a lot 
of credit for putting his money where his mouth is. Side note, his most recent Ryzen upgrade video was uh, pretty cool to see alongside the CEO, Narav Patel. I'll link that below if you want to see it. I think the future of framework largely depends on how the company deals with scalability, customer support, and AIB collaboration. As a kind of call to action, I think that you and I, the consumers, are at a pivotal point where we really need to speak with our wallets to see this company properly succeed. Personally, I'd be thrilled to see a two-in-one format from Framework, even though I have several laptops for different use. Cases, you know, my thin and light travel laptop is still a Samsung Notebook 9 Pro from 2017, because <laughs> I've customized so many things on it, and no laptop has really replaced it with all of the features it has from a creative perspective. Maybe Framework could fit that bill and I'll eventually sell it. I'd really be curious to see your guys' thoughts down in the comments on what you'd like to see from Framework, if you'd be getting one, and maybe some ideas you might have on how you'd use your Framework 16. For now, Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate the effort I put into this video. Uh, it was kind of a new format for me speculating and reporting on a company. So I hope you liked it. Uh, take care and I'll see you in the next one.